Welcome to MMO Grinder SideQuest, where I take a look at closed beta and paid games in trial mode, giving you a quick first impression. Today I'll be looking at World of Warplanes, the flying action combat sim brought to you by the same development team and publisher of World of Tanks, Wargaming.net. After over a year of being in closed beta, let's take a closer look now that the NDA has finally been lifted. This has always been a very pretty game to look at, more so than World of Tanks, as it's much easier to take in the splendor of the maps when you're soaring high above them. Effects on the water are really nice too, and even in medium settings the game looks fantastic. You have the option to crank things up higher or lower, but I honestly didn't think the frame rate trade-off was worth for the higher graphics, and I'm pretty sure a lot of World of Tanks and World of Warplanes players would prefer going as low as possible to allow for the smoothest possible action. Music in the game is very reminiscent of World of Tanks, unsurprisingly, remaining with a very military style of songs and playing only occasionally during matches. Sound is pretty loud, considering you're flying a plane, so you'll be hearing the whirring of your motor and plenty of machine gun fire from you and your opponents. The gameplay is similar as an overarching goal to World of Tanks, with a few differences beyond you're flying a plane now. For starters, while the main game type remains the same, two teams on either side of a field meet in battle until one team is wiped out or a base is captured, it's how it's done that's different. Specifically the base capture system. Instead of having a set flag on both teams' bases, with an area one must occupy for a certain period of time until you achieve capture, in World of Warplanes there are enemy and friendly ground targets scattered on the map, be it supply trucks, boats, warehouses, or anti-aircraft guns, which can be destroyed by gunfire or explosives like later tier unlocked bombs. Destroying a target will grant a point for your team as long as you have more points than your enemy. You'll slowly fill up a progress bar. If that bar is filled up, it's an automatic victory, but the bar is reset every time a teammate's plane is destroyed. Destroying planes also adds or removes from your overall match score. Control is a bit different as well, as your plane is always flying forward and can only be boosted or slowed, as well as steer towards whatever direction your mouse cursor is pointing. You fire your guns with the left mouse button, and it's quite tricky lining up the shots you need and keeping your fire on enemy planes. You can practice by choosing the bots mode, but it only gives you two planes to face off against, and the bots aren't the most evasive opponents. It's much harder to rack up kills than in World of Tanks. Ramming is also a usable, if not often suicidal, strategy, as a mid-air collision almost always results in both planes being destroyed. But the really savvy players can collide with enemy planes in just the right spot, shearing off one of the enemy plane's wings and rendering that plane helpless while sustaining low to moderate damage to themselves in exchange. Try not to do the same to your allies, because friendly fire is a likely scenario in the chaos of a dogfight. And while you are still punished for any friendly fire incidents like you would be in World of Tanks, it's not as terrible if you only send a few bullets through their wings, docking minuscule amounts of experience and credits, as long as you aren't intentionally trying to destroy your teammates. The community system is exactly like World of Tanks, and as the community goes, it's far less talking occurs in this game, considering it's not like you can park and hide somewhere safe. You can still only invite one other player into a match, too. Closed Beta doesn't seem to have too many options to use gold right now, so beyond the likely inclusion of purchasable alternate colors and patterns for your planes, it remains to be seen as to what you can purchase beyond preloaded planes. Overall, despite the similarities, World of Warplanes is a completely different beast from World of Tanks, and both games should attract their diehard fans. I'm personally waiting to see what World of Warships has to offer, and I hope we get to see Wargaming.net's ultimate goal of bringing the franchises together for full-scale war matches on land, sea, and air. This has been an MMO Grinder side quest, and it's time I logged out.